Welcome back everyone. My name is Eltamar and we are going to be continuing our Let's Play of Disco Elysium. Where we left off last time, we were going through the paces after a gunfight. Seeing you approach, the bruised man raises his beer in welcome. Crazy motherfucker. He lets Didn't out a think you had that fury in you, but I guess I've misjudged a lot of people lately. He lets out a whistle. That was one hell of a shot. Hell of a shot. The fucks did not expect that. He looks at you with unmistakable respect. I guess what I'm trying to say here is thank you for intervening, fellas. That was mighty brave of you. He extends his hand. This is big. It's as big of a thank you as Titus Hardy can muster under any circumstances. I shake his hand. I superstarred the shit out of that. Dick Mullen on steroids. A sad smile passes over his bruised face. Glenn would have liked you had he gotten to... Never mind. There's a lump in his throat when he thinks of Glenn, lying on the plaza, mosaic, bleeding. Sorry about the people you lost. His bruised face stiffens. Theo was old. I think he'd be pretty happy with the way he went. Never could imagine him withering away on a sickbed. But Angus, he gulps. He was just a stupid kid. Didn't realize the mess he'd gotten into. Trusted me. Still, the balls on that kid. Went down fighting for someone else's shit like a fat, angry bear. Here it comes. The last one's the worst one. He only deals with it by drinking copious amounts of 8% beer. An honest tactic and effective. And Glenn. Glenn was my friend. Best friend I ever had. Loved that crazy homo like my own brother. He takes a sip of his beer. We're all fucked without him, but what do you do? This job is shit. Hold on, what about that sh that shanky fellow? Dennis, you saw him run. He's a mean little shit and I never trusted him. He shakes his head. He better run real fast now. Real fast. They're good people. Sorry I went down like that. Yeah, well, momentum mori, right? Memento Mori, or remember that you must die, is a slogan various religious orders have thrown around since the dawn of mankind to emphasize the vanity of earthly life and the transient nature of all earthly pursuits. In essence, it means one should live life virtuously in this life to live better in the afterlife. Not really sure that applies here. Sure it does, he nods confidently, then raises his whiskey bottle. Live every day like it's your last, because you might be dead tomorrow. What's going to happen to the Hardy Boys now? First, we're going to find Dennis. I'm going to find Dennis. He interjects. I'm going to find him, and then I'm going to kill him. The tone of his statement is so matter-of-fact, it's as though he were talking about picking up a morning newspaper on his way around the block. Frontier Justice. I like it. Actually, your guy, your responsibility. Do what he feels right. Lieutenant shakes his head but doesn't say anything. Mm-hmm. He nods without really listening. We're hunting that rat down. Let it be known what happens to cowards. And then, he thinks for a moment, I guess I'll take a closer look at our union members. There's bound to be some ambitious fellows there who'd love nothing more than advancing social democracy by busting some heads. Might even ask Tibbs if he's tired for replacing windows and maybe wants to have some fun with his brother. He pauses. Anyways, don't you worry. As long as Titus Hardy is standing here, there will be Hardy boys. Do you know what happened to Clossier? Don't know. Don't care. I'll be glad if I never see that fucking woman again. Even after all that hell, he's still bitter about her. Titus, after all we've been through, level with me. You really liked her, didn't you? Nope. He did. Okay, got it. He nods and takes another sip of whiskey. So long, fellas. Be good so I don't have to come back here again. Take care, coppers, he says with a warm smile. You two look after yourselves. Death passed on you today, but men don't get that lucky twice. He nods to you and then to Lieutenant Coppa Loco and the uh, normal cop, I guess. Good luck in Gemrock. Scars make the best tattoos, they say. Thanks for getting involved, guys. Not a lot of cops would step into that line of fire, but you did. And if you ever feel like the uniform is holding you back, got a few vacancies. You make one hard, hardy boy copper. Well, that's nice of him. Alright, let's leave. Uh, we need to go do some things. First of all, let's go talk to the Jolly Mesk. See if we can't get any more info on that armor. Maybe we can get other pieces of armor. Kinda nice. What the hell does that say? One day I will return to your side. The graffito has been painted over the traces of the fight that took place here. It smells of blood and heavy fuel oil. This was Cindy the Skull. Looks like Cindy the Skull finally found the words for her masterpiece. The lieutenant Crouch is touching the fuel oil with his finger. Looks like it, yes, this is still fresh, and it wasn't here yesterday. I smell heavy fuel oil and blood. Some of it's even yours. Heavy fuel oil, isn't that flammable? What are you trying to imply, at fingers? You could throw some smokes, light up a ciggy, throw them in there, you know, just see what happens. See if it's flammable. It's better that way. Safer. Let's... Apparently not. Do that. Although I'm kind of tempted to. Is that a quest? I can. I can absolutely light it on fire. Alright, we need to make a cigarette. We need to get a cigarette in our hand. Do we have a cigarette? 
don't think we do. We'd have to buy some cigarettes, I think. Oh no, there's some cigarettes maybe here. Maybe not though. No, I don't think we have any cigarettes. We could buy some at the store though. We have $135 and we don't have to spend any on anything else. Let's go see if the store has any for us. And then we'll go talk to the Mesk and then we will head to the boat area. Get to the island, I think. Kind of tempted to- Um, is this about the questions again? Because I don't really know anything. That's not what I needed. I need... That's alcohol. Maybe this one? No, none of those things. Move this. We could try and steal the raincoat, but that's not gonna work with we'll this one. Okay, I just want some Astro cigarettes. All right, we have some smokes now. We can light the thing on fire, probably. Although I don't know why we need a cigarette to light it on fire, if we just need matches or something, but whatever. Let's see what we can do. I wonder if it's under. Items? Tools. There's a brave little army in your pocket. First smokes platoon. Twenty brave souls standing in salute, ready to step into the fire for you, sir. Pull one out of the pack. Put it in the pack for now. Wonder if I do I need to Gotta figure out how to do this properly. Alright, step back, Lieutenant. I set the graffito on fire. The fuel oil catches fire immediately with an ominous hiss, and the bright orange flesh or flash across the surface of the letters. Black smoke rises from the burning message. Disco Elysium. The lieutenant has taken a small step back. He looks at your face illuminated by the flames and nods silently. Then the flame falters. The flames warmed him too. Not all in a bad way. Let's go to that island. Cool. That was kind of neat. I'm glad we did that. Do we have any levels? We have one level currently. I can't believe we survived that. In all honesty, we have not built our character up for physical combat at all, so we're really bad at it. Let's go talk to the Mesk. He's gotta be up here. And if he's not up here, then I don't know where he went. His crew's gone. Hmm. There's a box here, though, with a dollar ten in it. So I guess he's not here. Now I don't know where to go. Maybe he's in here? It's locked. Everything's locked up. Right. We can't get into there because everything's locked. Because the dock is on lockdown. That makes sense. Is he standing in front of the door, maybe? No, I just think we can't do it. Alright, let's just get out of here then. Uh, let's call our thing and see if we're the peony. That's the thing we need to do. Our goal is to try and finish this game today. That is what we're going to do. Inside you see whatever is steering wheel. We know about this already. Let's pull out the radio. 41st. Jules, I heard that some people think of me as la puta madre's peone. Do you, know, think, do you think I'm corrupted? 10 for sir. There's a pause as he seems to mull it over behind his enormous radio microphone. Well, there's been some talk, sir. He says, he finally says reluctantly. Some talk? What does it even mean that there's been some talk? Do they think I'm corrupt or not? I only mean that there's been some talk in the station, that's all. But there's always talk in the station. You know how officers in Jamrock are. But then again, some of us are truly on the take. It's unfortunate. Over. Alright, well we are on the take. We're also close to a breakthrough, apparently. We did a jamais vu. Derealization. 
We get plus one XP for every orb clicked. I wish I had that one a long time ago, actually. All int learning caps raised by one. Jemma vu, the opposite of deja vu. Not already seen, but never seen. Everything that should be familiar appears strange and new, like some half-forgotten day in your childhood. Only now. That's the feeling you've been having. And who knows for how long. You should go and ask Joyce Messier about this. What world are we in? This is the fundamental question. Cool. We got that one done, but unfortunately, uh, Miss Messier is gone, so we can't ask her about that at all. So our only thing is to go to the armor, or go to the uh, island. Where is the rest of the armor, though? I don't even know. We're supposed to ask the Jolly Mask, but he's gone, so I don't know what to do about him either. Let's go all the way down to the docks. Maybe we'll meet him somewhere. There's my car. Still in the lake. I think that's the boat we need, maybe. Officer, what happened? You're limping. Why are you limping? You look terrible. Sorry about the quick cut there. I had to go deal with something, but now I have to go back in time a little bit. So we look terrible. You're not limping, you're you. She sounds almost disappointed with you, reprimanding you for falling and hurting your knee. And I said, some people hurt me. And Lillian says, is this from the shooting in town? She's not letting it go that easily. We heard gunshots. Not that we don't hear gunshots all the time, but they were closer than usual. And Kim said, there was an exchange of fire on Ruta Senka's lane. Nothing to be worried about, ma'am. And I said, you didn't only get shot. I dodged the second shot. I can also get not shot. Wow. Good for you. She smiles. You should see the other guys. Two dead, one in hospital. So you're a killer. That's good, I guess. I guess. Better than being dead. She nods solemnly. I'm not a killer. I'm a cop. Aye, I guess you are. I understand. That's how it goes. She nods. I have a question for you. Of course. Can I help you with something? We need to get to that island, and I point to it. That won't be a problem. It's wind still, and the tar just dried. She points to her skiff next to the jetty. We got two days of relative sunshine ahead. Can we borrow your boat? If you promise to bring it back and no scraping the hull, I just got it nice and yellow, and no drinking on the boat, her eyes narrow, and no joyriding either. Of course, ma'am. It's for a day or two, official police business. Aye, she nods. I nod along. Actually, what if I want to rock? See, that makes me not want to lend you my skiff. On a boat, rocking leads to capsizing. Then there is an absolutely 100% rock-free skiff. You got that? What's on that island? Nothing, just ruins. Used to be some kind of fortification there before the war. As for, for the communards. An anti-aircraft gun, I think, bombed to bits in the landing. Haven't been there myself, always steered clear of it. Hasn't been there herself? Who has been there, then? You said that you haven't been there yourself. Who has, then, if not you? My husband used to drink there. Him and his drinking buddies always seemed to, like, Always seemed like a bad place to drink to me. People died there during the landing, you know? My mother told me. This must be one of the many fortifications that was used in the dying days of the revolution against coalition forces before they took the city. She looks around. The kids sometimes go there too. I know they do on rafts. I told them not to, but they bring back odd bu or old bullet casings and such. Which kids? The twins. She points to the two kids playing on the concrete yard. God forbid they bring the girl along on some rickety barge. Can we maybe ask your twins about that place before we go? Would that be alright? Be my guest, she looks at the boys. They have a strange way of talking. See if you can get anything useful out of them. I seldom do. Thank you, we'll use your skiff to get there then. And she nods. Please be conservative with the fuel, will you? I just filled her up, but it's a small tank. Let's go talk to the children first, and then we'll head out. I think they're down this way. Right there. The scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone while the other one watches him do it. Okay, kids, you've been to that island, right? On that island? The one who's busy kicking the stone points to the bay? Yes, that one. I need to know what's there. That's, a uh, nothing? The boy pauses to think with his fingers in his mouth. That's just a sea fort and some plants. You can take a raft there. It's great. And, and? And then the other one butts in. We made a fire. We make, we make a fire. Mm-hmm. His brother nods. Gather the sticks for the fire and bullets. Or, not real bullets, empty bullets. What then? There are lights. The fire guy comes and asks us to put the fire out. Your nerve-ending sting from the mention of a guy. They must mean a human being on that island, but it's cut off. Someone lives on the island? No, the boy answers, shaking his head vehemently. His brother looks at you and then says, Yes. 
The lieutenant raises his eyebrows and whips out his notebook. Let's go with yes. Why is he the fire guy? Because, because, the boy pauses to think. Because he has to put the fire out, the other explains. Why does he ask you to put the fire out? I don't know. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like people to be there. You shouldn't go. Yes, the other one adds laconically, standing lasonically? Whatever. Standing with his hands glued to his sides like a little tin soldier. You mentioned something about lights. I, one of them. It's hard to tell which one now starts. I don't know. Did you mean there are electrical lights? He points to the street light. Uh, yeah. The boy looks at the toes. Is there anything else you can tell me about the guy? Age? Does he live there? No, he doesn't live there, I don't think. No, he lives there. He's been there twice. Two times. Huh. The first one pauses to think. Then comes to some kind of conclusion. He doesn't live there. He isn't there sometimes. Anything else? What does this guy look like? I don't know. They say almost in unison. How come? We, we ran. He just yelled that we shouldn't be there. Your father used to go to the island too, didn't he? Our father killed himself. Don't say that. He didn't. His brother punches him. The boy's eyes well up like he's about to start crying. Your father did not kill himself. I don't know. The boy who made the claim finds himself unsure of it. He looks around. The other watches him. Brows knitted. It doesn't even have anything to do with this. You. Father isn't the fire guy. Is that all you know? Is there anything more you can tell me about the island? There's a... The boy says, rubbing his eyes. It's clear that he has no intention of finishing the sentence. Lights, fire guy, the lieutenant looks at you. We should check up on that island. Okay, bye, kids. So there's a guy on the island. Interesting. Now, where's the skiff? It's over there. Let's go deal with that island thing. I think this is the last part of the game, if I'm not mistaken. A skiff with a small steering engine in the back floats on the calm mirror of the sea. Its two seats are empty. Once you get in, that's it. One pull of the starter handle and you're off into the bay. A strange trepidation comes over you. Are you sure you want to go now? Have you made all the necessary preparations? Closed all your accounts. Remember what the net picker said. It's a small tank. You won't be going back and forth on this. You take the engine, Kim. I'll hold the boombox. What? What what? How will we blast Sad FM on our way to the island? Fine. He gives you a resigned shrug. Let's blast Sad FM then. Sad FM is a radio station specializing in sad, slow rock songs. They seem to know its or you seem to know its frequency by heart. Let's ride to the island. Oh no, here we go. I'm so excited to see what's gonna happen. I really am standing with a boombox. Also, that engine should really be in the water. For the most thrust forward. It should be fully submerged. But whatever. Not our problem, I guess. Maybe that's why it runs out of fuel so fast. We're barely covering any distance. Also, we have oars. Why don't we just use the oars? It's not that hard to row. Or there's a oar, I guess. There's only one. A ship with this wide, though, you should really have two oars. Or well, maybe not. You can probably sit there. Depending how long the oar is, I guess you could... Eh, yeah, it'd be hard to do. You need two oars. I think you would need two oars to effectively row this boat. This is the slowest cutscene, I think, in this whole game. It's not really a cutscene, though. It's sort of like a... Cinematic type thing? It's not really cinematic either. It's like a game engine scripted event. There we go. Also, it still takes forever. Oh, it's pulling back over the whole area. That's neat. There's the church with the black hole type thing in it, which is pretty cool. They are really, really dragging out this trip to this island. And the music's not- oh, you know, we turned the music off, didn't we? not get um, copyright checks on us. There might be a cool song playing. Maybe that's why it's taking so long. I'm gonna quickly go back and see if there's a song that plays during this as soon as we land. Because you can't actually exit out of the screen. 
That looks like oil. Right there. If there is a song that plays on this, I am going to... I guess... Play the song over top. Or behind this video. You know what, I'll just take the audio, basically. And put it in behind it. But we're here on the island. This is where we are supposed to be, I guess. We just have to land our boat. Alright. Once we hop off the boat, and we are here, the boat comes to a slow stop. Kim turns the engine off, then there's silence. In the silence, a sputter of wings, a flock of quails takes off in the distance. Let's go, he whispers. I climb out. I'm going to quickly save and uh, check to see if there is actually a song that plays during that whole trip. If there is, I'll put it in the background. See you guys in a second. Alrighty, well, let's continue on. A makeshift bridge. The bombs are powerful enough to break the foundation. The rusted chain trails off into the ocean. The chain trails off into the ocean, connecting the island to the supply depot on the coast. This leads to the depot in Land's End. The lieutenant looks at the mechanism overhead. Oh yeah, so it seems. What do you think it was used for? For bringing munitions to the island, maybe? And supplies? You can also lock the bay when you raise the chain. As a defensive measure, locking off that side of the bay. From whom? From enemies, he looks up ahead. Enemies of the commune of Revachol. The sea fort was a revolutionary fortification, I believe. Interesting. There's an oil barrel. Some fuel has leaked out of the barrel. Black earth barrel. Black and viscous. There's a lingering trace of mazout in the air. Attention, inflammable. Okay, we are going to go up there, but I want to go down here first. Is there anything over here that we need to take a look at? Yes. The tires are falling apart. They're at least 50 years old. Alright, well... Guess we're going up this way. There's a bunker entrance here. This barrel says ICM. You see a star with little specks in it. ICM. This feels familiar somehow. Kim, what's the ICM? The Insulindian Citizens Militia. That's the official name of the Communards Army, the Black and White Army of the Revolution. Sounds an awful like lot like RCM. Sounds like RCM, Rivishal Citizens Militia. It does. Why? The RCM may descend from the ICM. May? It's impossible to say. He looks towards the darkened doorway. It was chaos after the war. The name was good for getting people to join us. Revishal West was mostly workers and criminals. Nice political thoughts rush through your neocortex. It's gonna be hard to say them, carrying around all that weight on a busted crutch is making you pant. What I'm hearing is we descended from the glorious revolutionary army. There were all sorts of groups and group group puzzles back then. Doesn't really matter. He bows to inspect the barrel. A white star, I point to the star on the label. No, he looks at it. An upside down star. With his horns in the sky, the symbol of the commune. Are those spec stars too? No, that's the uninhabited archipelago. A Delorean era symbol of the Insulinde, known as the face in the sea. Looks old. What's still doing here? After he thinks 44 years? That's not enough to hide what happened here, Lieutenant Ifrater. One of these barrels was still looking fuel, or fuel, as you saw. The city is full of these things. Old bullets, guns, fuel, stuff like that. Gotcha. There's a door. We're not going to go in there quite yet. No way to get up there. The stairs are gone. We can't go over there at all, so we're going into the door. I think we're running out of time on our video, unfortunately, as well. What's this? This is once an armament rest. Twin cannons were attached here. Medium distance, large caliber. It does look like a large turret. Careful, these stairs have collapsed. There's definitely somebody that lives here. Books, mostly fantastique and historical fiction. Dishes stained with sauce and fire, a survivor's kitchen. You see candles planted on a broken rangefinder. A foul arrower shirt, and eye coordination. A moth bitten bedsheet keeps the wind out. A 
also a scarf. A chair. Books and magazines lie scattered on the floor and on a makeshift cupboard. They're not particularly well organized. Sift through them. Most are soft covers. Serialized fantastique and detective stories from the 20s and 30s. This disparate digest includes the classic animal adventures. Popular depictions of man versus nature by amateur naturalists T and T Harpin, husband and wife. Widely read by people from all walks of life. Who doesn't like nature? Who doesn't want to survive? Among what is mostly commercial fiction and serialized stories, you find a magazine cathedique for electrical engineering. Then it's back to pulp. Light erotica, an international thriller about circuit benders. Someone's made themselves a home. The lieutenant inspects the soft cover. We have a conceptualization we can put in a point into. In fact, we might have enough two. We're closing on the end. Let's just try and level up once. Also, we have other gear that gives us more conceptualization, so let's try that. Not that one. In fact, I'm almost certain we do. After we finish this little area, we'll call it a video, and then we'll finish up the game in the next one, hopefully. Do we really have nothing that gives us conceptualization? I'm really running low on thing. Oh, no, it's composure. That one. Okay. We at least have one. Uh huh. Okay, it's gonna have to be as good as it gets. 83. Good enough. Or not. Good thing we saved. Apparently, 83% can fail. Then again, we've had some like 20% that have succeeded, so. Kinda goes both ways. Oh yes, under the bed there's a rather extensive collection of critical theory, that is, dour, life, non-affirming left-wing literature, published by small imprints such as Abattoir Firm and Usia. It's not exactly light reading. Look, Kim, powerful communist theory, rigorous and truthful. Isa, he announces the word diligently. I agree, humanitarian science is. It stands out. Not a lot of critical theory around in Revishal West. Your incendiary remark has failed to provoke him. Wasn't there some in the communist student's room? A student in the apartment building seemed to have some as well. Well, yes, that one student did. The little books seem inconsequential next to the big pile of frivolous entertainment covering them. Critical theory books, what do you think this means? Whoever has lived here, they have some education and a certain set of interests. Interesting. Okay, well, we checked out the books. That is straight up a giant cannon, though. I guess it's not really anything to do with- oh, this is all the same thing. I see. Okay, bedtime then. There's a greasy old spring mattress in the corner, resting on piles of soft cover books. White linen and a pillow are visible under a worn out caracol blanket. Someone has been squatting here. The lieutenant inspects the bed. The linen is fresh, recently washed. How recently? You force the rest of the sentence out through the pane, thick as molasses, no longer able to hear yourself speak. You know, officer, he looks at you with a touch of concern. You can rest here if you're feeling tired. I'll keep watch. You can use some rest for what's up ahead. Maybe a little shut eye, just an hour. You face the concrete wall. There's less light there, in the dark corner, like a dog. You lie there. I put my knees close to my chest. The blanket feels cold, the entire room does. Concrete and cold. Minutes pass, half an hour maybe, the sounds of the sea beyond grow distant. Your eyelids close until, until, until you feel yourself standing up in the darkness right next to the mattress. Slowly the world begins to hatch from the blackness, it's evening. Where's Kim gone? <laughs> Lieutenant is no longer here. Go outside, to the beach. I wasn't done looking at all the other stuff, though. How do I even get out of here? We came in, isn't it? I guess we go this way. The door is still here, closed. It feels strange somehow. You can't get in. There's nothing to click over here, though. There's no way out. Unless I go down this way.
Must have to go out this way. Okay. Although I kind of want to reload. I wasn't quite done with this place yet. And also, we should probably end the video after we figure this out. We're not going to sleep yet. There's more things to explore here that have now been faded out, like that engine thing. Okay, we're not doing the bed yet. We're going to finish this engine thing and then we'll uh, check the lockers. This great blast door must weigh over 10 tons of rust peels off of it. Okay, we're almost ready to go to the bed thing, I think, but not yet. An old cylindrical generator is nestled or nested above the ammo lift, with makeshift electrical wiring running out of its side and across the floor. The cables disappear into the wall to your right. The lieutenant puts his hand on the metal barrel, checking for warmth. It's cold now, he concludes, but someone has been maintaining it. The wiring has been repaired. Pour fuel into the tank. The lieutenant assists you. Holding the canister up to the fuel tank as you tilt. Dark brown viscous fluid pours out and the room fills with chemical smell. There's a red starter switch on the side of the cylinder and a start rope on the other side. The lieutenant flicks the switch. Pull the rope. The recoil starts. Wakes the old generator up. The machine sputters like an old warhorse before settling down to a rattle. That should do it. Where do the wires lead? He looks to the wall socket. Downstairs somewhere. Tap on the side. The tank is far from full, but there should be enough inside to keep it going for a day. Okay. We're going to quickly check out the rest of the inside of this place, and then we're going to go to sleep. I think. But for now, we're going to end the video. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.